How's it going guys? It's Kyle with the How To Guy 123 here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to enable virtualization on your PC. Enabling this setting in your computer's BIOS will allow you to run virtual machines. First, let's try running a virtual machine with virtualization turned off, and let's see what happens. The hypervisor that I'm going to use in this video as an example is called Oracle VirtualBox. It's my favorite hypervisor, and I've been using it for a few years now, and it suits my needs pretty well. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of hypervisors you can use, like VMware Player, QEMU, or even Windows Hyper-V, which is included with Windows Pro. But anyways, I'm going to try and run this Windows 10 virtual machine that I have here in VirtualBox. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Start button. And VirtualBox is going to attempt to launch our virtual machine, but then it just crashes, and we get this error box here. Fail to open a session for the virtual machine, Windows 10 2022. And if we click on the Details here, we can see we get this error. AMDV is disabled in the BIOS, so this error just lets us know that virtualization is disabled in our BIOS, and we need to enable it in order to run this virtual machine. So we click on OK to exit out of the error box here, and we minimize out of VirtualBox real quick. If we open up Task Manager, and then if we come over here to the Performance tab, then click on the CPU tab, you can see we have a whole bunch of information about our CPU here and can see that virtualization is set to disabled. So this just confirms that virtualization is disabled and we need to enable it in order to run a virtual machine. Additionally, we also need to make sure that our CPU does support virtualization. So I have an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X and this CPU does support virtualization. This isn't something I'd be too worried about though, as most CPUs made within the last 10 to 12 years do support virtualization. And if we come down here, you can see it says Hyper-V support is yes, so this means that my CPU does support virtualization. Now let's restart our computer to enter our BIOS. There are two ways that we can enter the BIOS. The first of which is to press the dedicated BIOS key on the boot screen when your computer is starting up. In my case, I can just press the delete key on my keyboard when my computer is booting up and set the MSI boot screen. And that will take me to my BIOS. The second method to enter the BIOS is through Windows. Simply click on the start menu, then click on the power button. Then hold down shift on your keyboard and press restart. After a few seconds, you'll be brought to a menu screen. Just click on troubleshoot, advanced options, then UEFI firmware settings. Next, click restart. Your computer will then restart and it'll boot directly to the BIOS. Now that we're in the BIOS, we're going to want to look around for our virtualization setting. This part might be a little bit different because not all computers have the same BIOS. So the method for enabling virtualization might differ from one computer to the next, but I'll try and walk you through this as generally as I can. In my case, I have an AMD Ryzen CPU and an MSI motherboard. So my virtualization setting is located in Advanced Settings, Overclock Settings, and Advanced CPU Configuration. The virtualization setting for AMD Ryzen CPUs is called SVM Mode, and we're going to want to enable it. So your virtualization setting might have a different name. For example, it might simply just be called Virtualization, Virtualization Technology, AMD V, or if you have an Intel CPU, it might be called Intel VT or Intel Virtualization Technology. Otherwise, once you've enabled virtualization, go ahead and exit the BIOS while saving changes. And now that we're back in Windows, we can real quick come back here to Task Manager and under Performance and CPU, you can now see that virtualization is set to enabled. So now if we open up VirtualBox and we try running this Windows 10 virtual machine again, I'm going to go ahead and click on Start. VirtualBox is going to attempt to launch our virtual machine and now it's booting into Windows. And there we have it. I've successfully enabled virtualization in my BIOS, and my virtual machine is now up and running. Anyways, that brings us to the end of the tutorial. If this video helped, please leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to help you guys out. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.